If you have a Bosch Axial Glide miter saw, but you're not really thrilled with the dust collection performance, then stick around and check out my dust collection mods that make a world of difference. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of DP Shop Talk. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the dust collection modifications that I've made to my Bosch 10 inch Axial Glide miter saw. Now I wasn't really impressed with the stock dust collection setup that came on the saw since it wasn't overly effective. So in true DP Shop Talk style, I've come up with my own. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might remember that I picked up this saw a few months back on a really great sale. So I've set it up uh, permanently as a shop saw, not to be confused with a chop saw, but a saw that lives in my shop. So I find it's a little on the heavy side at 64 pounds to really be practical to take around with me to site on, on the majority of the jobs that I do. So it stays up, uh, set up here permanently in the shop and then I have a smaller Bosch CM8S uh, miter saw that I take around with me to, uh, to jobs on site. So I'll go through the modifications that I made to the saw, I'll show you how to make them, and then I'll show them to you in action. So we'll start with the custom dust boot that I made for the saw. Now I found that the stock boot that came with the saw wasn't overly effective at collecting the dust. There was a lot of dust that just spit right out the back and, and flew out the sides and just didn't really work very well. So you can see here what a size difference there is between the boot that came on the saw and the one that I've made. Uh, the stock one just didn't come down far enough, didn't come far enough forward, and uh, didn't do a great job at, at collecting the dust. So I'll show you how to make the boot here in just a minute, but first I wanted to give you some information on what this one is optimized for. So there's just over an inch of clearance between the bottom of the boot and the table surface. So the reason I went with this dimension is the majority of the work that I do in the shop with the saw is cutting cabinet parts uh, to length and kind of doing miscellaneous cuts on, on material that is usually three quarters of an inch or thinner. So if you do a lot of work with uh, thicker stock, you may need to modify the, the size of the boot a little bit to bring it up higher. But for the work that I do with the saw, it's really the perfect setup. It, it gives you the best uh, balance of, of dust collection performance and, uh, and capacity for the saw. So the material that I chose for the dust boot is a roll of rubber drawer liner that I picked up from the dollar store. So I traced the pattern for both pieces of the boot onto the material and cut it out with a pair of scissors. Now you can download this template for free from the accompanying blog article on my website at danpatterson.com and I'll put the direct link for that in the video description below. So once I had the two main shapes cut out with the scissors, I used a small utility knife to carefully cut out the holes which fit onto the plastic nibs of the saw's dust shroud. So next it's time to start assembling the boot. Now to do this, I use pieces of masking tape to tack the two parts together to form the overall shape of the boot. So I started in the middle and worked my way down each side, being careful to keep everything in proper alignment. Now the advantage of the masking tape is if you realize partway through that things are off a bit, it's easy to peel it off and adjust. So once I was happy with the alignment, I used Gorilla Tape to replace the masking tape to make a permanent connection. So I started with a strip on one side, adhering it at the bottom, and then carefully removing pieces of masking tape as I adhered the Gorilla Tape along its length. Once both long edges were taped, I added a small piece of tape at the top to complete it. So once the taping was done, I installed the boot on the saw. And that's just a matter of aligning the small holes in the boot with the nibs and hooks on the plastic dust shroud and hooking it in place. Next, I installed two pairs of three quarter inch rare earth magnets, one on each side of the boot. So one magnet goes inside and one goes outside to basically clamp the front tabs of the boot in place. So this gives adjustability to the height and position of the front of the boot. The final component of the boot is a piece of metal wire that I bent into a U shape. Now the purpose of this wire is to give some strength and form to the opening of the dust boot. 
I found that without this wire, the sides of the boot tended to collapse under the suction power of the dust extractor. So I used some masking tape again to tack the wire in place and then tested the saw back and forth to make sure that the position of the wire was okay. So once I was happy with the position of the wire, the final step was to replace the masking tape with Gorilla Tape. I applied a small piece of Gorilla Tape in the middle so I could remove the masking tape and then applied a full length piece on both sides of the boot to give me the final product. So now that you know how to actually make the dust boot, I'll talk a little bit about the types of cuts that are possible to make with it installed. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're making a full slide cut, uh, with that one inch clearance there, it's really optimized for material that's three quarters of an inch or thinner. Now, if you're cutting something vertically against the fence, like baseboard, then it doesn't matter because the dust boot stays behind the fence when you're making those cuts. The same goes for if you're cutting crown molding uh, in place against the fence, then the dust boot stays behind the fence so it doesn't interfere with it, even if, if you're uh, have it set at 45 degrees either way. Now for making miter cuts, uh, that's no problem at all. The only thing you have to do is back the fences off uh, with these auxiliary fences on just to give enough clearance for the dust boot to come through. But then you're able to, uh, to angle it to 45 degrees and everything slides through fine. So really the only place where an issue comes up is if you want to bevel the saw. So say I bevel it to 45 degrees to one side, then you can see the dust boot just about touches the table surface uh, on, on the bottom corner here. So if you were making bevel cuts, if, if it was just sort of a, a straight uh, chop bevel cut, again, no problem because the, uh, the boot stays behind the fence. But if you're making a full slide cut, then that would be an issue. So I very rarely make a cut like that. So in, that, in those rare situations, I'll just take the dust boot off. It's easy enough to do and then put it back on when I'm done. If you make those cuts a lot, you could modify the shape of the boot uh, to kind of cut those corners off, but you're going to be sacrificing uh, dust collection performance when you're making uh, sort of normal square cuts. So the other dust collection modification that I made to the saw was the dust hose itself and where the dust hose connects. So we'll start with the most important part and that is the connection point. So the saw comes with this rubber 90 degree elbow installed. So that just fits on the top of the, uh, the plastic dust shroud there. So that allows you to plug your dust extractor into the end of it. Or if you don't have a dust extractor, you can use the bag that comes with it and it will fit onto the end and it'll lock on with these pins so it gives you a secure connection. But the problem with using this fitting is 90 degree bends really kill airflow. So you're reducing your suction power by the air having to, uh, to bend around that sharp 90 degree corner. So what I did is remove this, it just twists and pulls off, and I installed the dust hose directly onto the plastic dust shroud. So that gives a nice, uh, nice direct line for the air to flow straight up the dust, dust shroud and through the dust hose. Now the reason that Bosch uses that 90 degree uh, connector is so that the bottom of the motor will clear it so it comes out the side. So as you can see here, when you have the, uh, the dust hose installed directly on and then sort of going back more vertically, the motor will contact the, the dust hose when it comes up and prevents the saw head from coming fully to its upright position. But I don't find that's an issue because you have about seven inches of clearance here from the underside of the guard to the table surface and the maximum that you can cut against the fence on the saw is five and a half inches. So I don't find that it's an issue. So the actual hose that I used uh, for the dust collection setup is a pool hose. So it has a one and a half inch inside diameter, uh, which fits perfectly onto the end of this plastic dust shroud. Now I'll put a link uh, for this type of hose in the article over my website so you can find that over there. And then I just uh, uh, connected it with uh, just a typical metal hose clamp on the end so that it doesn't pull off so it gives a good secure connection. So I cut off the plastic end that came on the pool hose that's meant for, for your pool fittings. 
And uh, so that just gave me a raw end of, of the hose to plug directly on, and it gave me a perfect fit. Now, on the, where the hose goes over the edge of my plywood countertop, I installed just a piece of, of metal plumbing strapping to hold the hose on, just to clamp it there, so that I have a full range of motion of the saw, whether I'm mitering or, or 90 degrees, uh, so that the hose doesn't interfere with anything, it's not dragging on anything, and uh, so it makes it, it very convenient. Now, at the other end of the hose, uh, where it goes underneath my workbench and plugs into the dust extractor, I fitted, uh, cut the hose to the length that I wanted, and uh, and then fitted this two and a quarter inch diameter uh, dust collection fitting onto the end of the hose, so my uh, my dust extractor or my shop vac, uh, it'll easily plug into that. So I'll put the link for this fitting in the article as well, uh, but it's basically a reducer, so I cut off the uh, uh, the small end of the reducer and then just enlarge the hole in the end of this basically cup that was left uh, to just over an inch and a half and then press the hose onto it and sort of threaded it on and that gives a good secure connection. So, uh, so that gives a really convenient uh, plug-in uh, directly to the dust extractor. So now for the part that you've all been waiting for and that is how does it work? So let's fire up the saw and show it to you in action. So as you just saw, this modified setup collects the vast majority of the sawdust made. It doesn't make it completely dustless, but it's a vast improvement over the stock setup on this saw. If you have one of these saws, then you know exactly what I mean. Now, you may have noticed uh, some of the other additions that I've made to this saw, like the MDF auxiliary fence faces, or the zero clearance insert, or the sliding uh, material supports that I have on each side with built-in flip stops. Now I'm gonna be covering all of these additions in detail in the next episode of DP Shop Talk. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you're notified when new episodes like this come out. As I mentioned earlier, make sure you head over to my website at danpatterson.com and download the free plan available for the, uh, the dust boot. And while you're over there, make sure you check out the popular MPT or multi-purpose table and consider building one and adding it to your setup. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, don't forget to like, share, and hit that subscribe button. As always, make sure you leave your ideas, thoughts, and questions down in the comments below. Let's get some shop talk going. So thanks for watching, and until next time, let's talk shop. Mm -hmm.